All right, so I've decided that I want a fantasy landscape that has icy cliffs, that's morning light, snow melt, boulders, hazy sky, alien atmosphere. So maybe I'll have multiple planets or different constellations in the sky, something like that. Reflections of different galaxies. In order to do that, I need to now start sourcing some of this imagery. And a great way to do that, if you look on the assignment, is to use either Google Images or Pixabay. Google Images, the problem with searching with it is that you'll get mostly copyrighted images. And even if you use tools to make sure that they're all large, that means at least 1,000 pixels. If I look up something like icy cliffs, I'll get a lot of results. But anyone can put something onto Google. And so a lot of these are owned by someone and might be tough to download. And then you always have to worry about the ownership and if you're doing enough to change the, the artwork. So this was large, but notice that it's still underneath 1,000 pixels. And we need at least 1,000 pixels at its smallest size. So even though Google has the advantage of many, many more images, you know, just thousands and thousands of images, they are all copyrighted. It is hard to tell exactly, like this is a great image. If I open it in a new tab, it's hard to tell exactly how big they are. And you see, even though it's under large, it's not large enough. So my preferred site, even though it's more limited, is Pixabay. Pixabay is a Creative Commons site where people have donated their photos and their artwork to be used in a what's called a Creative Commons open license, which we'll be learning more about with reading chapter two and with our question of the day two we'll be digging into. Basically, it means we can use all of this artwork and it's already vetted to be clean and useful. So I found a bunch of photo or Pixabay images. I'm gonna download the largest raster option. To do that, you just create a free account using any email. And you can donate to the image author if you like, but donating isn't required and crediting isn't required. Though it's nice because I've donated things to Pixabay. I'll get messages every once in a while. I'll even get PayPal payments every once in a while from people that have used my images and are just grateful. But this is just one of the advantages of digital art, the wealth of resources that other artists have made available to you. Free for commercial use, no attribution required. So this is what's called a Creative Commons license. And though there's not as much on here as on Google Images, there is a lot and all of it's good quality and good size. Okay, so that's all frozen stuff. I said I also wanted an alien. That's an interesting example. Remember, I don't want to have figures in it. This one's nice and moody. So we get to see some fantasy composites here because of course alien is not is not real. And we're we're going, even though this is Creative Commons open, we're going to do everything we can to transform and make this work our own. So some of these are pretty cool. All right, download those. These are all going into my downloads folder. Now this one's a little too too dark and moody. I'm not going to use that one. All right, what's one other thing? 
snow melt. So I want the idea of water in it somehow. Just to show it's not all solid ice everywhere. And I'm going pretty fast. You guys have the luxury of having a full week to work on finding references and making your sketches. And remember, there are multiple pages. Ooh, I like that. It's called internal framing. It's pretty nice. And these are like puzzle pieces that you're going to put in, put together into your own original landscape. And so the next thing is to sketch that out. Thinking about foreground, middle ground, and background. And I want something quite dramatic. I don't want something really boring looking. I don't want something with lots of rushing water because that's a figurative element. Okay, so now that I've got around 10 or so different sources, now I'm going to put those all into my assignment folder so I can look at them and then sketch from them. Because not all of these are going to be used. Maybe only three of these get used, and then I find another two based on what I sketch with the with the three I choose. The shapes that ice makes, though, are really, really neat. Okay. So now I leave the internet, and I go back to my folder, and I'm going to pull all of these from my downloads. Remember, these are all very high-resolution images from Pixabay. But I want to organize them somewhere. So I have 14 different options. Of these, which ones am I pretty sold on being, being really interesting? I like this sky. Sky is pretty easy, so I'm going to mark it green. I like this as a foreground element, this arch. So I have to take the people out. I like this. It's kind of an interesting novel element. And then so for some backgrounds, I really like this. And maybe this. Gives me a lot of open space to work with. Okay, now I'm going to arrange them just so I see the ones that I marked. So you can do this in, in multiple ways. I could put them in a new folder as well. Then I'm going to put those images. There's just five of them. It's good to not have more than five to sketch from. And then what I'm going to do, this is difficult to show. It's very easy to do in a sketchbook. <laughs> a little difficult to show in on a screen recording. So if I float it on a window, maybe that will let me. Yes, good. Okay, so these are my sketches. I want you to make a horizontal and a vertical sketch. And I know we're running out of time. So a, a vertical sketch would be taller than it is wide. 
drawing fast here, and a horizontal sketch would be wider than it is tall. And I want you to try to combine those elements. So here I have an arch. I want to put that arch in the extreme foreground. There it is. And I can mark that, name it number one. So this arch is from my source image 1A. 1 because it's the first image I'm using, and A because this is my A composition, if that makes sense. Come on. There it is. Next, so I can mark it 1A. What do I think I want? Let's see. Oh, there was another one I definitely wanted that I thought I had, had marked, and that was this one. So five or six images. Then maybe I want this other big extreme foreground element. Come on. Sorry, my computer's a little slow. There we go, catching up with me slowly. I'm gonna put that right here, and that's 2A, this snow-capped kind of peak, and that might extend through this gorge. Right. Okay, then I want the frozen waterfall, whoops, just wanna rename it. Then I want the frozen waterfall to take up maybe some of this area. Actually, no, forget the frozen waterfall. Let's go for keeping it simple. Go to the middle ground. What middle ground do I like? I like this kind of big open plain. So I'm going to make this. 3A, almost done. And then the this, this space, the cosmos, this will be my fifth element. So then I'm going to use the cosmos as 5a here. And then I want to basically make my own composition out of those resources. That's vertical. It's got some issues with it, but it's a good start. That's what I need for next class. Then I also want to try it horizontally. So if I'm going to horizontally do this, let's try to use the frozen waterfall cliffs. So this will be 1B. Is there a nice little detail? But then what's a good foreground element to balance that out? Maybe the arch I still use. This will be 2B. And they're the same, right? And then... Let's use, let's go right to 3A for that middle ground, which will now be also 3B. 